you ever wondered what the most famous, most wanted, gold standard cybersecurity certification is? Well, this is a story of how I spent one week studying, cramming, and praying my ass off before taking this four hour monster of an exam. Just for the chance at obtaining best cybersecurity certificate in the world. This is a $750 four hour exam with no refunds and no second chances. Well, unless you bought the peace of mind bundle, it gives you a second chance at just 200 extra dollars, but I don't believe in peace of mind. I'm Mad Hat. So I bought the appointment, they took the money right out of my account, and the countdown to testing time began. This was do or die. This was for all the marbles, and to be honest, I don't have a lot of marbles left, and I wasn't about to be another casualty of this test. Could I do it? Could I obtain the most sought after cybersecurity certificate in the world? Well, I was about to find out. How did I prepare for this test, you ask? Well, if you think I read this thousand page study guide cover to cover like everybody else on Reddit and other forums said to do, you'd be wrong. I did not do that, nor should you, unless you hate yourself. This book is dense. It's like mm -hmm. reading a dictionary. Reading the dictionary? Caught me. I like to break a mental switch. There's a lot of words and a lot of definitions, like what is this model? Bella Padula? No, actually, it's Taco Bell Chalupa. <laughs> that was a mnemonic device. You're gonna need some of those. Which brings me to my first resource. This glorious guide on YouTube by Pete Zerker. It's probably pronounced Zerger, but Zerker sounds cooler. I split up the domains into two per day and spent the first four days watching two domains per day. I took notes just to make sure that I was actively watching. Just as some of you are gonna forget that you watch this video. I didn't want that to happen when I was watching that video. So I took notes watching the video at 1.25x speed because I'm crazy like that. And once I finished two domains worth, I took practice tests on the two domains that was just fire hosed into my brain. This brings me to my next valuable resource for studying. The OSG official study guide practice tests. The Wiley Cybex ones were included when I bought the official study guide Kindle version off of Amazon that I foolishly bought when I only really needed the practice tests, but it was only 44 bucks. So these had 40 practice questions for each domain and multiple full practice exams. I didn't touch the full practice exams until I finished all eight domains of the video. Now would be a good time to explain what goes into this test. All eight of these glorious domains. It covers a mile wide and an inch deep worth of knowledge. And honestly, learning it was great insight, which is gonna help me in another video where I cover different niches that you can go into in cybersecurity. Let me know in the comments down below if you are as confused as I was about picking a niche and what niches are out there, because that's coming up soon. Now each domain covers very top level concepts and to give you an idea of what concepts you'll need to know, head on down to this free massive glossary list provided by ISC. Now once I finished the eight hour video on all eight domains over the course of four days and all the practice questions for each of the domains, I started studying the practice tests. I was getting around 60 to 70% on these practice tests and I made sure to read why I got the questions wrong and why I got the questions right. And luckily explanations are provided to let you know why the answer is correct and why the answer is wrong. This is the most important aspect of the studying. This is also when I brought in the big guns, the big boson and pocket prep practice questions. Boson was $75 for 700 questions. I happened to get it when it was 25% off during their sale. And pocket prep was only 25 bucks for a thousand practice questions. And they also have test banks for pretty much every certificate I mentioned in my last tier list video. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. Pocket prep really should sponsor me. For three days straight, all I did was practice tests. I would wake up, go to my office, pretend to work, while I was doing practice tests. I mean, I did some work, but I ate, bathed, and crapped practice tests. Towards the end of the three days, I was scoring around 70 to 80%. So needless to say, I wasn't exactly confident going into the test. And all in all, I ended up going over 3,000 practice questions. That's a lot of questions. Until finally test day came. Honestly, I didn't cram much the day of the test. I kind of accepted my fate. And I figured that at least I would know what the test is like. And if I fail, I could just wait the 30 day period and take it again. I was having some serious not buyer's remorse on that retake peace of mind bundle. So I got there an hour early. I ate this sweet deli sandwich that I got from the nearby deli. I had some horseradish deli special sauce on it. Oof, so good. Also had an energy drink all while watching Kelly Handerhand's Why You Will Pass the CISSP. This video put me in a weird senior management zen where I was thinking, all right, think like a boss, think like a boss. Don't get sued. Culpable liability. They can't sue you. You're wearing a mask. I walked into the testing center 30 minutes early as ISC advised on their official instruction page. They scanned both my palms, had me lock up my personal stuff, risked me, 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just had to show that my pockets were empty and that I had nothing written on my legs, which is kind of weird because if you've taken the tests, then you'll know that there's not really anything you can write on your legs that is gonna help you during the exam. Plus there's cameras, so. But regardless, once that was done, I signed a piece of paper that said, I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. And they showed me to my testing cubicle. Not gonna lie, the test is not what I expected. I thought it was gonna be multiple paragraphs with multiple choice sentences across multiple choice options. But there was a handful of questions that were kind of long and then a handful of questions that were a lot shorter than I expected. The questions were as vague as people said they are, where two answers seemed to be the more correct, but one of the two was even more correct, the most correct. Now this is something that the practice tests did very well at preparing me for. Getting used to answering questions that were the best, most, least, worst option available. And halfway through I was really regretting drinking that sugar-free energy drink, but it was too late because I didn't want to waste any time on taking a break. And I made sure to do the math several times throughout the test to make sure that I was pacing myself to be able to finish all 175 questions should I have to answer every single one of them. <laughs> Which, by the way, this test is an adaptive test, meaning that it will give you harder questions if you're doing well in a domain and give you more questions in a domain you're doing poorly in. I like to think this test was literally designed to fail you. The test is like, oh, you're doing poorly in this domain? Well, let's give you some more questions and make you do even worse. And right around 100 questions, I started getting really nervous because at 125 is when it can potentially stop your exam and tell you to do the walk of shame up to the proctor and get your results. And the test ending at 125 questions could mean one of two things. Could either mean that you did so well on the test that you aced it and you don't need to do the additional 50 questions to prove your knowledge, or you did so poorly on the test that even answering and getting the next 50 questions right cannot save you from failing this test. So as the old proverb goes, I was sweating balls at question 120. I get to question 125. 2024? What the fu- I pick an answer, I hit submit, and there was a delay. Lag. And it showed me the, your test is over, please go receive your results page. This is when I started thinking, this is what I get for thinking that I could study for just a week and stand a chance at passing this test. Most people study from six months to a year for this exam. And boy was I demoralized. They hand you the results on a piece of paper, face down, for secrecy but I could have sworn that the test proctor read the results out of the corner of my eye because I wasn't looking prior to giving it to me. I grabbed a piece of paper. I didn't look at it. I had already accepted my fate by that point. Grabbed my stuff out of the provided locker, dropped the locker key in the box, and I did the second walk of shame out to my car. And I'm ashamed to admit that I almost shed a tear the test was brutal. Nothing made complete sense. Every question was confusing to some extent, so I had no clue how I was doing at any point throughout the test. So I had no clue how I was going to go about restudying for the exam when I didn't know what I did wrong on the test. So I got to the car, I sat down, I put the piece of paper in the passenger seat, and I mentally prepared myself to read the piece of paper to see how badly I failed. Luckily, the printout will show you what domains that you are below, near, or above proficiency in. So this does kind of give you a way of gauging how you did on the test and areas that you could study better for on the next exam. Obviously, if every domain is below proficiency, you know you shat the bed. So I swallowed my pride, accepted that I was going to have to make a video about how I failed the exam, and I finally checked the piece of paper. Congratulations, we are pleased to inform you that you have provisionally passed the Certified Information System Security Professional Examination. Holy shit, I did it. So many thoughts and emotions went through my mind. There's no fucking way this is real. No, God, no, no, no! Am I a genius? If this is real, I won't ever drink again. Hey boss, I just passed the CISSP exam. Is there anyone on the security team that could endorse me? Check with John, I don't know. Oh, oh okay, uh, thanks, I'll ping him. What, no congrats, no good job? No nice work? Yep, my boss literally said nothing when I told him I passed the exam. Nothing at all, completely ignored the news in fact. So needless to say, I'm getting out of here as soon as I get my endorsement approved and I get my certificate. And yeah, that was it. I studied for a week, I took the test, passed, and proceeded to get ghosted by my boss. I honestly thought that I had failed 100%, which is very strange because passing at 125 means that you did exceptionally well on the test, but I had no fucking clue at any point during the test. This is the beauty of the test. It is the easiest, hardest test you'll ever take. 
Now, if you too want to take your shot at this test, I do have all the resources I use down below. And ISC has been doing this on again, off again, piece of mind voucher that my coworker is actually just doing. And I don't know if it's because I just passed, motivated him to do it, but he's going to take the test without studying at all, which I don't recommend, but I think he's thinking he's smart enough and we'll, I guess we'll see. And then if you do fail, you have the second attempt to pass it. So what do you got to lose? Nothing. I'm also happy to announce the new Mad Hat Discord, where you all can join and discuss all things cyber tech and hacking. I've also enabled channel membership if you'd like to support me along this journey of ours. And you get sweet extras on Discord that I'll be changing periodically and adding more and more stuff to as I find the time to do it. I also have my Patreon set up if you'd like to support me that way and like an opportunity to message me or maybe even have a one-on-one -on -one chat with me. Now, I don't know everything, but I do know something. Thanks for watching, everyone, and welcome all you new subscribers to the Mad Hat Cyber Army.